Hey, what's going on everyone? Joe Menza here and uh, got a few new patrons and I thought it was probably a good time to go over more of the basics and start right from the beginning. So this is the main tool that we're using. This is the large Ron Ranson Hake from ProArt. And when you get it, it comes in a package like this. And the reason why you want this versus other hakes, as you'll notice, let me open the package here. We'll do an unpackaging type thing. I'm gonna take it out of the package. And this is just a little backing thing. And this is the brush. And one of the things you'll notice right off the bat is how the brush is tapered at the end. A lot of the other brushes that you get out there, the, the, the other brands that you might find at the hobby stores, those brushes are more raggedy at the end. Now you'll notice this is made out of wood and the primary bristles here are goat hair. And because of that, you want to make sure and only use cold water. You don't want to use hot water. You don't want to shrink the bristles. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, because there's a, there's a glue on here of some kind that holds the bristles together when you first get it. So what you're going to want to do with this brush is put it in some water. So you're going to want to choose something that you can put your brush in. I'm just using this so you can see through. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put the bristles in. It could be deeper than that, but I just wanted to be able to show you putting it in water. And initially what you're going to do is you're going to put it in the water until it basically dissolves. You can do this in the sink too, but until it dissolves the glue and it softens. Okay, you can work it a little bit if you want to and, and bend it or whatever. But leave it in this water solution until it gets soft. And you can see it's already getting soft, okay? So we're just gonna work it a little bit in here. And that pretty much dissolves all the glue. You can re-rinse it in clean cold water after this because there's probably gonna be some residue in this, in this container. So now, one of the key things you're gonna wanna have by your side is a towel like this okay and this towel you're going to use to remove excess water now i want to show you when you first take the brush out of the water you'll notice it drips okay if you use the side of your container you can wipe off a little bit of the excess Now this is what I refer to as a full hake full of water. Okay, and you'll notice if I squeeze it, you see how much water comes out of there? Quite a bit. Let's do that again. Let's do that. Let's do that right on the table. And you can just see how much water is there. Maybe you can't, but you get the idea, okay? So, when you first start out, the first thing you're going to do when you're coating your paper, if you want to get a coating of water, is you're going to take and you're going to wipe off the excess like that. You can just tap it on the towel, just so there's no drippage, okay? And now this is ready for you to coat your paper. So now, as you can see, I have... Let's try to make this so you can see it the best possible that you can. Probably back this up a little bit. When we take the brush out and it's dripping out of the water, and you don't want to dribble this all over, so you're going to get rid of a little bit of it. This will be your first wetting of the paper. This is one of the few times that you will use an entire full hake of water. Chances are there will not be a time when you use a full hake like this. Okay? Now, 
as you start painting, and your first thing you do is you, you wash your brush, okay, and you, you start going into colors, you're going to dab harder on this towel. Now, there's not as much water on here, but there is enough that when you dip into your paint, you see, if I squeeze this, there's still water on the brush. That is what I would call a half hake full of water. When you take and you dab this on the towel, you now have about half of what you had when you dipped in here. So dip in, okay, squeeze that out. You can see the drippage. Now we take this out, wipe the edge, and we dab it in the towel. You see, there's not as much water on there. So when you first start out painting, you're doing your sky and so forth, and you dab this on the towel, that's what you're going to have when you start out, when you first start doing skies. Okay, now, as you move along, you may have less water on there. And you may need more. You may decide if my brush is too dry. Okay, it's at that point you're going to want to wet your brush, but because you're not cleaning it, if you're going to a lighter color, then you're going to have to swish it around, wipe the edge, dry it on the cloth. If you are just re-wetting your brush, you don't want to dip the entire br brush into the water. What you want to do is just dip the tip. You see? Just the tip. And when you do that, it'll get you back to a tapered edge, just like this, so that you can do straight lines, keep your brush straight. Because what happens is, once you start going, and your brush starts to look like this, and you're painting, well, what do I do now? Okay, what do I, what do, I do with this brush? Well, you can dip the whole thing in there, but if you just dip the tips, you'll notice, and rub it on the side, we're back to straight again. And if that doesn't work, you can rub it on your palette like this. And your brush will be back to being trained again. Now you may get this. You may get what I call the devil horns, where it starts coming apart like this again. We dip back in the water. And we're back to this again. It may take some time to train your brush. When you're done with your brush, you're going to want to clean it, get it as dry as possible, and return it back to this position. And don't store your brush like this. Store your brush like this. Or if you have a clip, you can clip it on something. But don't store your brush on the bristles. Store your brush. Reshape it. And store your brush in the upright position. So that's it. In the next video, we'll go over painting techniques for starting out. We'll use one color, and we'll go over some of the painting techniques just using the hate brush. See you soon.